Hello and welcome back everybody to lesson number three in this FS Academy Navigator series. Today's lesson, watching the clock, will take us to different waypoints using time and heading. Now, the manual is very important here, so you make sure you open it up, you read it. Uh, you'll need some something to uh, measure the time, so your phone or a stopwatch or something. So make sure you have that ready before you start. So, all right, that's it. Let's jump in. For this exercise, we're going to use more sophisticated navigation techniques by introducing dead reckoning. Dead reckoning relies on the simple principle that if you fly in the right direction for the right amount of time, you will arrive in the right place. In order for the timings to work correctly, we will decide upon a cruising speed which we will need to fly accurately, which is why we introduced speed holding in the previous tutorial. At the moment we are following the northern coastline of Cornwall in the UK's southwest, just past Newquay. Keep following the coast towards the small airfield of Perrinporth at 3,000 feet. During pre-flight planning, we will have produced a nav log, which lists each waypoint of our route and the headings to fly between them. Using a cruising speed of 100 knots, we've worked out how many minutes each leg of our route will take, which will help us to know when we should be getting close to our next turning point. Remember that these timings will only be useful if we actually fly the speed we have planned, so maintain 100 knots precisely. Along with an accurate speed, our heading keeping must also be accurate. For each leg we will have specific headings to fly, which must be flown as precisely as possible in order to keep us to our planned route. Once we reach Perranporth, we'll begin the first leg of our route by turning to heading 205, which we will fly for four minutes, taking us to the town of Redruth. This leg is, uh, or this, this lesson is going to be a little bit more difficult because we have to pay attention to speed and heading. We're just reaching overhead to Perranporth, our starting point. So turn us on to heading 205. All right, now we're on our way. Note the time and in four minutes from now, we should arrive at Redruth, our next turning point. The importance of accurate heading keeping becomes greater with longer leg distances. If you fly one degree off from your planned heading, after 60 nautical miles, you'll be one mile off course. This is known as the 1 in 60 rule. A heading is our direction in degrees magnetic, as is displayed on our compass and heading indicator, and is the direction the nose is pointing. Keep us on heading 205. All right, so we're at 205 and I'll just try to maintain the, this heading and this speed. The point we are aiming for is a junction on the main road, the A30, which passes just to the north of Redruth. As the town is an area feature, we can see Redruth already, but we will only become visual with our point feature junction as we get nearer. I can just pick out the junction now and the time is reaching four minutes. In person you can lean and move your head around in order to keep a waypoint in sight. Here we can use the external camera if you wish. Okay, so it's definitely not been four minutes, it's been two. Not sure how that time got messed up. Because I clicked the stopwatch as soon as he as soon as we finished the turn, so. not going faster than we should be. Our 
next leg is towards St. Anthony Head, which is heading 130 for 5 minutes. So make a left turn now onto heading 130. Alright, 130. Now that we've completed our turn, make a note of the time. This leg is for five minutes. Timekeeping can be done in a number of ways, such as checking the aircraft clock and adding five minutes for an arrival time or running a stopwatch. We can see St. Anthony Head already, as it is at the tip of the distinctive thin strip of headland just beyond the town of Falmouth. Please keep us at 3,000 feet. Yeah, I know. I dropped. Trying to pay attention to everything else and pay attention to my heading or to my altitude. It's all right. So I'm gonna add more thr thrust. Come on. There we go. At each turning point, we check a few items to ensure that we remain organized and keep track of some important things. One method is to use the five T's. Turn. Time, tune, temp, tank. The first item is turn. Ensure a correct and accurate turn to the heading of your next leg. This is followed by time. Start timing the leg, whether using a stopwatch or other method. Next you tune, meaning set any radio frequencies and transponder codes needed also to ensure that the heading indicator is still aligned with the magnetic compass. Temp is for engine temperatures and pressures, or T's and P's, checking they are all indicating in their normal ranges. Finally, tank. How much fuel remains, and do you need to start using another fuel tank to keep the aircraft balanced? We'll use the five T's at our next turning point. I'm at a four minute mark. There's St. Anthony's head right there. clearly see our turning point. When we reach it, we'll be looking for heading 050 for six minutes. About 10 seconds. Okay, so I have five minutes, but we'll wait for his direction. We have arrived at the turning point, so first we turn to our next heading, which is heading 050. Zero 050. Zero five zero. Could make it easier and just put him like, you know, on the numbers. Now start the time for six minutes, which will take us to Mevagissi, our next turning point. We are remaining outside of controlled airspace, so we don't need to tune any radio frequencies or change our score. Fuel looks good. Engine temps all look good and in the green. Plenty of fuel in the tank and still balanced. Get into the habit of using the five T's at every turning point. In Mevagissi, we'll aim for the harbour. Okay, checking the uh, heading. Looks like uh, it scoots over a little bit. Uh, speed's okay. Altitude's fine.
Coming up about three minutes, about halfway there. Heading altitude and speed look okay. Okay, back down to 3,000 feet. Speed's still good, altitude is good, heading's good. We're getting close to Mevagissi now, and we can pick out the harbor. Next leg will be a short leg to the Eden Project on heading 014 for three minutes. We're at five and a half minutes right now. Oh, there it is. And I just hit six minutes on my timer. As always, we'll wait for him. I think we're off some. Just I'm guessing we shouldn't be this far off to, to the course, but to guess. Turn. Make a left turn onto heading 014. Time. This leg will be for three minutes. Tune. This leg is also clear of airspace. Temps, engine parameters are in the green. Tank, fuel level looking good. Okay, let's see here. Altitude is fine. Heading is fine. Speed's a little slow. Next POI is not in view. The Eden Project is located at the base of an old quarry, which might make it harder to see until we're getting close. You will identify it with the large biome domes, which house an indoor rainforest. Not yet. Oh. Just checking again. Speed's good. Altitude's good. Heading is good. And we're just past one minute on my timer. And yet. Oh, wait. There's the dome. There's some domes right there. Bet you that's it. Uh, speed good. Heading good ish. Here you can pick out the huge biome domes of the Eden Project, which opened in 2001 and is focused on promoting sustainability and environmental awareness. That's really cool. The larger dome contains the world's largest indoor rainforest, with the second dome simulating Mediterranean conditions. About 10 seconds left to hit my three minute mark. All right, three minutes. I'd say that's pretty darn close. Wow, those things are neat. This lake will take us to Collidford Lake, the largest lake in Cornwall, which serves as a reservoir. Turn, heading 036. Time, six minutes. Tune, not required. Temp and tanks are looking good. All right, heading is off. Speed is good. All right, I think we're good there. Mm, let's, we need to actually get down just a bit. Heading is good-ish. Speed is not. Heading is, or uh, altitude is not. Lakes work well as a mixture between area and point features. Taking up a wide area, they are visible from afar, especially when the lighting conditions cause the sky to be brightly reflected by the water. Lakes also usually have sharply defined edges and features such as spillways, piers, or small islands, making for useful point features as we get nearer. OK, 
Okay, heading is okay. Speed. Need a little bit more power. Some floating cars and trucks down there. Some Hogwarts kind of stuff. Just past the four minute mark on my timer. We can see the lake up ahead. Aim for the dam wall, which is on the southern edge of the lake. So my time is off. This is five minutes. I could just hit in five minutes, so. Just waiting for instructions. We got about 12 seconds till six minutes. Speed, altitude, and heading are okay. All right, so I just hit six minutes. And I think something's wrong. Got off a bit on our trek. Hopefully this will pick it back up. Gonna pick up speed again, or altitude. Great job. This is an advancement on the stepping stones technique, as now we can steer towards waypoints which are small or too far to see due to distance or visibility. Adding the time element also provides us with an indication of progress, as now we can tell when we are nearing the waypoint and what time we can expect to arrive. So far we've looked at navigating in still air, where there is no significant wind. But wind adds a new dimension that needs to be accounted for, which we'll look at next. All right, folks, as you can see, we were a bit off track to that last leg, which it did not uh, trigger anything. So had to basically turn around and fly us towards the dam. And that ended it for us. But anyways, that was fun. It was a little more difficult having to watch everything. But uh, I had fun, and I hope you did too. So we will see you for lesson number four.